Now that you've seen how to submit reports, somebody's got to approve them. That's going to be my job, for example, at schoolofbookkeeping.com. So when Eric submits his expenses in an expense report, I get an email, and I can either click to immediately approve it, or I can click to review it first. In most cases, I'm going to want to review it first and make sure that they're, in fact, expenses that I do want reimbursed. And I also want to make sure they're categorized correctly and, if necessary, tagged to the right customer or job for job costing purposes. Let's see what this looks like. Let's say Eric and Chris and I took a trip up to, I don't know, San Jose for a large QuickBooks conference last October. Along the way, Eric may have driven his car with Chris, and I may have flown up there, compliments of Intuit. Along the way, Eric uh, put a lot of miles on his car, about 600 to be exact. I'd want to get reimbursed for that. Uh, Eric also spent some money on some meals that we didn't pay for directly out of the company during that trip, and he certainly is entitled to get reimbursed for those. And there are other expenses along the way, uh, both part of that conference as well as for other purposes that uh, by the end of the year, Eric needed to get reimbursed for. So what Eric did was what you saw uh, through the last lesson, which was he submitted his expenses. And, and when he did that, I actually received an email confirmation that let me know that Eric had in fact submitted expenses to be approved. And notice it came to me with this nice little link to click on to go ahead and approve the report if I just wanted to go approve it or I could view it. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. Now when I click on his unreimbursed expenses from 2014, and I think I actually renamed this, uh, I don't remember what he called it, but I can go through and I can look at the expenses and approve it. Now notice there are these little symbols here next to these guys and I can see what that means down here it says there's policy violations, they're missing a tag. Now, if I wanted to, I could reject it on this basis. I could reject the whole report, or I could go in here and simply reject this one expense, and of course, I could put my comments explaining why. Now, I'm going to be fair to Eric here, because Eric didn't, we didn't have the tag policy set up yet. Notice also that, as I've mentioned several times now, I have expense if I configure that the tags are my customers and jobs, so that I can job cost things properly. So when I click this drop-down, I'm getting a look into our customer list essentially. So I'm going to tag this and notice what I've done is I've created a customer called events and within that I created QuickBooks Connect as one of the events. So if you look over here at the QuickBooks side of it, this is sure enough exactly what it looks like. And when you're concerned with job costing, to me it's really important to set these kinds of things up. Uh, you know, BQE software obviously is a client, but then I always set up a customer called events and within that, this way I can describe different events that we go to. And if QuickBooks Connect, for example, is going to be an event we're going to go to year in and year out, that's okay. I can use this same version of the customer because obviously the dates uh, in, in which the expenses are incurred make it clear which year it is that we're talking about. So that's not an issue. In other words, there's no need to create QuickBooks Connect 2014, 2015, and so on. And of course I have Expensify here who I've been picking on because that's whose course you're taking. So let's say there's one other thing I really want to add to this because as you're going to see in a minute when we get into Eric's expenses, there's going to be some overhead type items. There's going to be some computer and internet expenses that Eric paid for out of his pocket and he wants to get reimbursed for them. So once I decide that I'm going to be job costing in any accounting file, to me it's important to establish as a matter of procedure and I think a best practice really, that if I'm going to have any situation where I'm assigning things to jobs, it's best then to make sure that everything, all expenses, get assigned to a job of some sort. This way it's clear that somebody didn't simply forget, or, or for that matter, if there's no job assigned, it means that somebody did simply forget. In other words, there's no room for confusion as far as, wait, is this one not assigned to a job because there is no job, or is it because somebody forgot? When you have a policy like that, it eliminates that question. So let's create a, a job called overhead. And I'm adding that in. Now, as you've seen in prior videos, at this point, we need to go update web services, right? Because this is the integration. This is how Expensify updates. So I'm going to bring that up and click Update Selected to update Expensify. And we're going to wait till it's 100% complete to make sure that the update will affect Expensify side on the web. Once the progress hits 100%, you're done here, but it's probably a good idea to jump over to the website. I'll go in here to the admin section, into policies, 
and I just want to check that my tags have updated. And a lot of times what you'll have to do is you'll have to refresh the page in order to make sure that every update that you just sent from QuickBooks comes over. And sure enough, here's my overhead, and I just need to check that off so that it's enabled. And it notifies me that the change to the policy has been saved. That means that this will be available in all dropdowns where we need to assign a tag. And that goes to the users, such as Eric when he's submitting expense, as well as me, the admin or approver, for the purposes of when I'm reviewing the reports. Previously on Expensify, expense reports that don't suck, I talked about the different options we have with respect to the information we provide about the expenses. Specifically, that we can tag them to a category as well as tag them to a job for job costing purposes. During the review process, you're going to see that there's some very nice options in terms of laying out the expenses that have been submitted. So you can quickly and clearly see, first of all, if something is out of policy, which we'll talk about later. And what that means really is that something's not tagged to a category and it's required that it is, or something's not tagged to a job and it's required that it is. You're going to be able to pivot around the data a little bit to quickly get at the different views so that you can quickly analyze and organize the information and make sure you have everything in place that you need before you go ahead and improve those expenses. So now I can go back to reports and go to Eric's unreimbursed expenses from 2014 and let's go into chart beat and now I can assign this to overhead for that expense. Pipe drive is overhead. And TechSmith is overhead. So now we've got all those assigned and one good thing to do here is let's group it by tag just to make sure. So we've got everything is either going to sales meetings or overhead and that's pretty much what it comes down to. Notice also it shows me the notes. These are notes that Eric actually made when he submitted an expense. So if I look at note one that's over here. Um, there's an additional expense for pipe drive on the same day. Why? Because he added me as a user to that service. Uh, and then of course uh, two and three are you know team meetings. These are for the mileage that he submitted for. Um, so this is, you know, really powerful, handy stuff. All the information is right there. Now that I've uh, gone through everything, and again, I can go back and let's go back to breaking down by category. And in this view, again, I've got a column for each category. So once again, in this way, I can make sure that I've got everything, that it all looks good. And when I'm ready to, I can simply approve. And as I mentioned in the write-up, I can approve and forward if I want somebody else to give the final approval on this after reviewing it, or I can final approve it. And once I do that, it's approved. And now I can export it to QuickBooks, FreshBooks, Evernote, or a CSV file. I can certainly unapprove it, or I can go ahead and reimburse. Now notice there are some choices here. I can reimburse via direct deposit, right? I can reimburse via PayPal, Bitcoin, or I can say I'll do it manually, just mark it as reimbursed, which is what I'm going to choose here. Because then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say export this to QuickBooks Desktop because I have that integration set up. So I'm going to choose that option. And now we have to review this, and it's important to take your time to understand what you're doing here. So uh, first of all, we're going to make sure that we're exporting to the right company, right? And then I'm going to export it as a bill. This way it goes in as a bill in QuickBooks to be paid. Then if I wanted to, I can also add the check that pays the bill, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Then what do I want to include in the report, both reimbursable and non-reimbursable? Then I'm going to choose the uh, vendor. Eric Greenspan, to which accounts payable? I only have the one. Then this section says, would I like to create individual items for each expense on the report or create a single item with split itemized transactions? And as long as everything's been assigned to an account that has been enabled based on the integration with QuickBooks, in other words, as long as everything's been assigned to an account that's actually in QuickBooks, it will come encoded perfectly, as you'll see in a minute. In the event that I have something in the report that isn't assigned, I can choose a default account to... Uh, to, uh, to book it to. So I might have something like uh, reimbursements. There we go. Then I can choose whether or not to apply a class. And over here, you know, default customer or job. So again, if there isn't one assigned, then I can tell it where to put it, which I might choose overhead or something like that. Of course, because I have the policy set and just the way I approach this whole thing, I didn't let anything go through without making sure that everything was assigned to a customer or job. So once I'm done and satisfied that I've set all these options up the way I want them, I can simply click export. Okay, and then Expensify gives you the instructions for how to now update this. 
Over here, we're going to say update selected. And then let's go take a look and see what happened in QuickBooks. Let's go into my vendors. And there's Eric. And here's the bill, 694.56. Double click. Everything's in there. Nice memos. They even give you the report ID so I can easily trace it back to its home in Expensify. Everything comes in as uh, assigned to the right customer a job. And everything came in as billable. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So this is the review and approval and I even went a step further and showed you the export process again. We showed you that earlier in the course but I figured this is a good place to review that so you can see the whole thing sort of come full circle. That, my friends, is how you review and approve expenses in Expensify. So again, and as always, if you have questions and you're a registered student of schoolofbookkeeping.com, go ask them in our forum. Otherwise, reach out to us through any of our public forums and we'll be happy to answer your questions as best as we can, as quickly as we can. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, which is where we're going to take a look at setting policies. Now that you've seen the entire cycle, from getting an expense submitted for reimbursement to ultimately approving it and reimbursing that expense, we're, we want to take a look at the next logical step in this process, which is something that actually happens before any of it. And what I'm talking about is setting policy. That's what we're going to look at in the next lesson.